I'm making this one now because <laughs> I want to talk about my girl parts. Um, <laughs> it's like uh, this, I think, was kind of my brain went into a deliberate hyper focus last night to distract me from all the Christmas stuff. And I thought it would be nice to make a post that isn't about Christmas. Um, and so I was going to make this one, but then, oh my God, it's just, it's connected to so much, so much. Um, but um, it's calling it like that fucking beautiful bitch within, sorry, her, is like, I don't know, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm enjoying it. And I like, I shouldn't have done. This sort of shit was fucking me up, man. Like, I always get asked, why? Why? Society really thinks it's moved on. It's quite hilarious how many people go, well, so what? You're a bit womanly, so what? So, so what? <laughs> you didn't go through what I went through. <laughs> That's what. Um, but I do remember reading when I was like 12, 13, something like that. And uh, it was in a magazine. And it talked about when women have three boys. So when a boy fetus... Uh, is maturing there's a point where it gets like bathed in testosterone um but testosterone women's bodies need it but it's quite toxic in high amounts so it's a sort of um the body the female body responds to that right by getting rid of it and apparently by the third child the woman's body has got much better at doing that and then it just talked about how the third born boy is often quite feminized. I was fucking 12 or 13, going through all of the fucking, that's where the sort of the male pride and the ego is at its full fucking flight. And there was a lot of not a real man toxicness around my life. And it festered. <laughs> it festered. Like, what? I'm a fucking girl? What the fuck? It was horrible. It was fucking horrible. Um, and, you know, society does kind of, like, ridicule men, you know, in, in lots of ways. If they show signs of being a woman, they've got a fucking pussy or a sissy. They're seen as weak. They're seen as jokes. Even in a sort of I'm only joking kind of way, there's always a bit of a ooh to it. I get that now and then, and it's like, mm, I'm not always in the mood for it. <laughs> not always in the mood for it. Um, but then I, so then I find myself having to play up to it, um, which is why I go on about it. But then it's this, I don't know, <laughs> what was it? I, I made a comparison the other day. Um, I'd been to see my favourite human, and we'd been on the phone, and she was like, could you get it for 11? And it was like 10 or something, or whatever time it was. And I kind of planned out, and I was like, I, I reckon I can get there for 11. And I didn't, I got there about 25 past, because I couldn't find a vest that went properly with my pants. And I was freaking out about it. <laughs> but when a man does something like that, that's seen as fucking vain and pathetic and whatever. And believe me, I've been the worst culprit for doing that to myself, because I've been conditioned by society of what's expected from a man. So have women, so have men. <laughs> Um, so what I said was, um, I talked about it. I said, I messed my whole room up because I was having to find, um, different vests. And I was like, it's the vest that I'm probably not going to expose because it was quite a cold day. I had a hoodie and a coat on and I thought, I can't really see me needing to take my top off. But it was like, if I did, I needed to have the right vest on. And, um... I chatted to her about it and she asked me about it, not in a nasty way, but she sort of queried it. And I went, think of it like my makeup. Like girls, a lot of girls can't go to the shop without makeup. And it's not about being fancied or whatever. I mean, some girls will say you never know who you might bump into. or, or But generally they'll say it's that they don't feel like they're themselves unless they've got their makeup on. And so often when I've talked about my clothes and the sort of clashy stuff that I do with it and the things that I do with it, they're almost like paintings on my outfits. They get called outfits and costumes. Um, 
And what I always say is there's something about the colour coordination and the style combination that comes back and just says, Mikey. And it varies. I don't really know what it is, but it's it's I call it a chord sometimes, like three notes make a chord. But then you change one note and it changes the, the whole tonal characteristic of the sound. And you do that with colours. <coughs> so I think of it like my makeup. And a girl's got to look right. <laughs> and it's kind of, it just, you know, you have to, that probably made people titter a little bit. And again, that's the sort of bit that's like, yeah. <laughs> it's not full acceptance of it, is it? Um, and, you know, I, I was just deeply fucked up by this. I was deeply fucked up by it because it translated in so many ways of being being me being declared fake because there was this highly emotional side to me that I buried all the time and you know when you've watched like passion turn to like friendship oh just when they sit people see you say something a bit nice and you feel it, you feel people change towards you. And it's always, not always, but very often, women. <laughs> and so that just, you know, when you're, it's, it leads to that fear that I've had a lot of people say, it's like, once you know the real me, you won't want me. And I always used to think it was because they saw this, like, softer side of me, but I don't know, I think it was often deeper than that. They saw that I was afraid of it. They saw that I wasn't comfortable with it. I didn't like it. I thought it made me unappealing. I thought it made me unsexy. Um, and that got fucking played back to me many, many fucking hurtful times over. That's why it fucked me up. Because um, it's, you know, when everyone has a job loving themselves, but when when people who love you suddenly start rejecting you, or it seems rejecting you, based on this softer, wishy-washy side of you, it really is fucking hard to love it. You think, well, you not fucking don't. <laughs> why should I? Why do I have to? <laughs> I can see why you don't. <laughs> so, you know, it leads to internal shame and internal dislike. And that's what fucks people up. So it might objectively, again, objectively look at it and think, there's a bloke, he's got a womanly side, had a bit of trouble accepting it, now he's accepted it. Big fucking deal. And that's the way it will look to a lot of people. That's the way they'll kind of um, interpret it and feed it back to you. So what? What are you worrying about? <laughs> it's like well, all the fucking turmoil that I went through. And, you know, when you've got fears about something, you get those fears confirmed, don't you? That's fundamentally what it is. Um... But it's, I don't know, I, I made a lot more sense to myself when I look at some of my histrionics. It's only histrionic because it's on a man. When I look at the amount of female friends I've had that are like, wow, you're really understanding, compassionate and intu intuitive. And I just think, yeah, it looks amazing because it's on a man. Doesn't it? If you just called it woman's intuition, if you were talking to a woman, you'd be expecting it from her. <laughs> you know? Um... And, God, I'm starting to car crash because I did say there's so many things connected to this. But um, it is weird, like, when I first wore women's trousers, um, it was around the time I'd done that big post. And I just started to buzz off the fact they were women's trousers. And when I had women saying, oh, well, I don't really think they're women's trousers. I'm like, they're bright fucking pink. They've got flowers all over them. <laughs> you ask any fucking bloke to wear them, he said, they're fucking women's trousers. I'm not wearing them. And this is a cross-dresser, but then I don't class myself as a cross-dresser. I like still looking like a bloke. Um, like when I wore the skirt. I did feel fucking... I felt like I pulled it off. And I felt sexy. That's not that I'm saying I think I looked sexy. And it just felt sexy to wear it. And I've heard women say that. And what I was getting was a lot of, you know, a lot of positive feedback from women who were doing shit like slapping my ass, but not in a I actually want to pull you kind of a way. They were doing it in a, like, I don't know, in a very complimentary sort of a way, like, mate, you're killing it. I'm loving your style. Um, but they would, like, saying 
babe and pinching my ass and stuff and being a bit like, you know, and that's exactly what I wanted. I spoke. <laughs> it wasn't that I thought, fuck, I look hot, they're going to want to take me home. It was, I wanted to look like a slut. I said it to that girl. I had a genuine, I just wanted to look like a fucking slut. And I said it like a dirty fucking whore. And I was just smiling and like being a little bit dark with it. Um, but then I did get pulled off down the club by a gay guy and I didn't like that and I haven't worn it since because of that because I'm just thinking I made a post about it and I thought I'm probably to look like I don't like gay men from that post because I was quite nasty about him I don't have a problem with gay men I do have a problem with sexual aggression and fucking people making assumptions just because I had turquoise fingernails and a fucking skirt on um <laughs> But yeah, he thought he could just drag me off down into a nightclub and that, like, no one would appreciate that. No one would fucking appreciate that. But, um, I don't know. This is like, this is 11 minutes already, but I think I want to carry on. I might do this in two parts, two girl parts. 